Hi all, I have an absolutely amazing game of the very young Magnus Carlsen when he was only 15 years old, around that age. This is in the Chorus B, 2005. He ended up coming midway in the 2005 Chorus. Uh, in one of the key games, he used a Sicilian Sveshnikov. And the very next year, he actually won Chorus B, shared uh, first prize. And so qualified for Chorus A. So he was getting into the big leagues, basically. But the Sicilian Sveshnikov played an important role. So this early game of Magnus Carlsen, he was black against Ivan Shaparanov. Uh, so one of the top Bulgarian players uh, who in 2018 uh, changed federation actually to Georgia. But uh, Shaparanov, if you if you know Topolov, is like the number two to Topolov in Bulgaria. So uh, a huge Bulgarian player. Uh, let's have a look at this game. So e4 from Shaparanov. So Magnus plays the fighting c5, Sicilian defence. No Petrov here. This is really the fighting Magnus Carlsen. Knight f3, knight c6. The start, the invitation of the Sicilian Sveshnikov. An opening I really loved and still love uh, as a fighting choice with the black pieces. We have d4, c takes. Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, e5. So we have here the key start position uh, of the Sveshnikov knight, db5, d6, bishop g5, a6, knight a3, b5. So black is threatening b4. The two key theoretical moves, the main ones, are bishop takes f6 or knight d5. So I used to have a lot of printouts actually on the Lepson printer about the Svenskov. I absolutely was fascinated by this opening. Uh, so I did study uh, both of these two uh, major alternatives. Uh, the one that Sheparanov, Sheparanov played is bishop takes f6, so doubling black's pawns. Black has to double, allow the doubling of the pawns here. After queen takes f6 as an alternative to g takes f6, uh, it will be a disaster actually with this massive tempo gaining move uh, which um, after knight d5 if the queen doesn't go back then knight c7 check will fork the king and rook so but if the queen goes back white has very pleasant powerful moves at their disposal one powerful move is bishop takes b5 and this situation is critical for black already uh, say this scenario, White's getting a big advantage here. This this is very, very nasty. Also, a quieter one would be c4 here. Uh, and if black, you know, takes, then this is huge. This is tremendous, this position. Both knights are conspiring for that b6 square uh, with a very nasty uh, position because that exposes the c6 knight. White will be winning either the knight or an exchange if black's not careful so bishop b7 and just taking here so basically it's a real disaster this position knight d5 believe it or not this powerful tempo uh, there's two ways to be sliced up here c4 or bishop takes b5 so it's very very important uh, to take with the g pawn to have the doubled pawns here but as a Svenshnikov player uh, and I love the Sveshnikov. The bishop pair is often amazing. And also you're looking forward to using the G file here. This is a great road of attack. These bishops uh, in this game, we'll see how actually they can subtly uh, contain the opponent's king's escape squares. Not just the short ones, but even longer escape squares. It's amazing, magical how these bishops can be used for the attack and the G file in, in the variations we're about to see. Uh, so knight d5, we have bishop g7, bishop d3, knight e7. Black wants to challenge f5 and d5 early on here, not just routinely castle. There's a sort of bind on the position. Knight takes e7, queen takes, and white tries to reinforce that d5 bind with c4. Black's energetic dynamic response here is f5. This is so much better to fight for these two key squares than say playing b takes c4. This allows white a strong bind after knight takes c4 and knight e3. This knight is binding both squares, trying to suppress this bishop. This is very unpleasant stuff. Say f5, uh, even if f4 is allowed, this is a really nice knight on d5 again with tempo. It's very nice for white. So 
black fights for those key squares f5 and to try and keep this bishop alive potentially we have white castling on c takes b5 actually there's a really powerful resource available for black in this position can you see what what would be uh, the move you think here if i give you five seconds to pause the video black to play okay d5 it's a bit shocking the tension here it opens up potentially the queen on this diagonal this knight might be a target sometimes uh, and yeah it's just very very dangerous for white for example e takes d5 e4 and this bishop's now liberated and this is just vicious say this check is actually uh, crunching here of the queen d2 queen takes b2 and here black is actually now threatening bishop c3 as well as the knight so for example knight c2 bishop c3 disasters like that can happen if we look at this again this is remarkable d5 it's ju it's just very very dangerous so that was e takes e4 yep this position it's incredible if if um what, what is actually if if queen d2 queen takes b2 as we, as we saw there's, there's actually very little uh, little white can do if rook takes if if rook b1 just take the knight and again bishop c3 is threatened okay peace up there isn't too much compensation so this is really powerful if e takes check and then actually just taking here because e4 is powerful for bishop b2 coming up uh, say pinning that pawn uh, this position with bishop takes b2 coming up is really nice for black black's got no problems there at all big advantage so yes it's it's scary stuff um after this f5 in fact so white castles not entertaining the prospect of of that big d5 move so castling and black castles c takes b5 now here you might ask if e takes e4 is actually uh interesting for black actually more interesting for black this position here for example queen e5 bishop c2 because uh, that was unpinning the pawn threatening e takes but now d5 stops the knight going to c4 this is huge for black black's got a big advantage there uh interesting is um queen h5 though this this is quite interesting uh, there's a lot more options available to white in this variation okay so anyway <clears throat> we have in this this game c takes b5 and this lets magnus play this powerful d5 here creating this huge tension in the center we have e takes d5 e4 queen e2 rook b8 this has got this has got a really nifty idea to it now according to engines though computers uh, are the current research it seems as though here although this has got a really nifty fantastic cool looking maneuver in mind a rook lift actually which i absolutely delight in there is a more technical move for those wanting a really stable position from a theoretical point of view queen b4 so this does mean the bishop is now threatened it's just unpinned the pawn and the thing is if the bishop moves now queen takes b2 exposes the vulnerability of the knight and black's bishop pair is rather cool here so knight c2 a takes for example this position just coming back it's activated that a rook on the a file so if the bishop wants to protect the pawn say rook takes f4 and this is really nice all of a sudden this is at least equal for black that bishop pair the active uh, pieces in general it's really quite dangerous there's a lot to play for here black's fully equalized so really this queen b4 is actually it could be a, a technical improvement uh, as well but this is really entertaining this is a really fighting move as well creating lots of practical opportunities to attack the white king and what i find fascinating about this game is how these bishops play a role in, in potentially covering escape squares not just f1 but even the distant escape square e1 with a dark square bishop and some of the variations quite remarkable uh what we're about to see rook a b1 <coughs> is played 
if uh, B takes A6, this is interesting. It's, it's gobbly, materialistic. Rook takes B2 and Queen C5. Uh, this uh, attacks the bishop, and if White's White's kind of losing material here, this is pretty much hopeless. Uh, this is a, a way to get get more material. So Rook A B1. We have Rook B6. And it's here though that actually actually B takes might be a plausible move. What was played is Queen E3. It's a complicated scenario, this situation. On B takes A6, can black prove a strong attack? Uh, maybe a critical move is Queen H4. Uh, with no defensive knight on F3, H2, the soft spot, is more lit up than usual, more more exposed. And say Bishop C2, uh, Rook H6, H3, Bishop takes A6, supported by the Rook. And that takes the F1 escape square critically. This is one of the uh, things I mentioned, these, these bishops, how they can uh, play a big role in uh, the attack. Say Rook G6, King H1, Bishop E5, Black's up to no good here, and actually can get a formidable attacking position. So here, threatening things like Queen E5, potentially, or, or and now opening up ideas of doubling the Rooks for G2. It's just very, very difficult for White to parry all the possibilities. For example, that's getting a big advantage. If the Rook moves back away from that threat, then doubling the Rooks, and there's really nifty resources here after Queen H4, which shows the real beauty. Look at this. It shows the real beauty that the bishop's covering escape squares. Sometimes this bishop can cover further escape squares as well indirectly. But here, the rooks on that G file really enjoying this road of attack. This is a really nice position. Uh, so here, can you see what black can do in this position? If I give you five seconds here, what would you play here? Okay, there's a real crushing move, bishop f1, putting so much pressure on g2. If rook takes, rook takes g2, threatens our rook h2 checkmate. Uh, so if check f4, trying to block that bishop from h2, e takes, renewing rook h2 checkmate, white would have nothing better than giving up the queen. That's totally hopeless. So it's it can lead to real crushing scenarios here. After b takes queen h4, it's really delicious how the, the the rook and queen and the two bishops work together. If g3, then just e takes d3, attacking white's queen, and so that's uh, very nice for black. The pawns are not really helping. That's taking away the escape square f1, and black can make this. Therefore, by taking away that escape square. Black makes the uh, doubling much more effective to take on h2. Uh, if white has nothing better than giving up the queen, then that's bad news. So it's a very, very interesting scenario here where queen e3 was played hitting the rook. So rook g6, has black got enough attack here? Bishop c2 was played here. Uh, very, very interesting variations. If b takes here, queen h4, this might actually be slightly better version of events after a7, bishop b7, bishop c4, bishop e5. I mean, from white's point of view, uh, <clears throat> doesn't seem immediately fatal, but uh, it's very, very dangerous for white. <laughs> this position with this resource, this bishop without the counterpart running rampant on different parts of the board, now threatening bishop b6, supported by the rook. This is so dangerous. Uh, so, for example, king h1, bishop b6, queen b3, bishop takes a7. And white has to play a technical move against this battery on h2. And, yeah, maybe computers can survive with white, but it's easy for a human to fall into various traps here. For example, queen takes b7, rook h6. And <laughs> what happens here after this? How does white actually defend f2? The bishop's actually taken away rook f2 as a resource. So that, that's it's hopeless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically, um, okay, bishop c2 was played. We have queen h4, and it looks really menacing, this position now. We have the move b6 being played here. Let's have a look as well, though, before we get into b6, the game continuation. 
G3, Queen H3, F4. Uh, black here has the luxury of of a draw on with Bishop D4, deflecting the Queen away from G3 to get a perpetual check in one variation. And if White refuses that perpetual check with King F2 instead of accepting the Rook, then taking here an E3 is nasty. This is too nasty uh, to bear because now there's this diagonal uh, pressure on e2 and so this position it's actually falling apart for white here with best play from black it's it's falling apart for example like this we'll be winning the queen and uh, big advantage to black so it's very very tricky here but b6 was tried we have king h8 so this celebrates that open road to the king that g file there's a lot of attacking opportunity here. Knight c4, rook g8, doubling the rooks potentially once the bishop moves. Uh, also here, f4 is interesting. If queen takes e4, rook h6, h3, bishop takes h3, this position is actually rather nice after bishop g4, uh, threatening bishop f3 and queen h1, checkmate. Uh, yeah, what does white do here? Give up the queen? That's pretty hopeless. So yeah, f4 is also, it's a very, very strong move here already. But rook g8, g3, queen h3, rook fd1, rook h6, queen f4. Uh, and here, it's a, it's a really nice position. And what I mentioned before about the bishops taking away key escape squares like f1 and the distant one, the distant escape route would be e1 if the king can be stopped there. It's sometimes useful to make queen h2 more effective. But here, there's there's a key idea based on f1, believe it or not. In the game, Magnus played bishop f6. But there's a very very interesting resource here as well. I wonder if you can spot it for black based on trying to take out this escape square f1 to make queen h2 more effective. Do you see the, the resource I mean if I give you five seconds to pause the video? So 100 points if you can find it. Okay, the remarkable thing sometimes on the other part of the board can influence this part of the board. And in fact, a5, this light square bishop, if it gets onto this diagonal, it's pretty dangerous. And you might think, well, there's always b3. The thing is with that, then this bishop could also be useful on this diagonal, taking away e1 as an escape square. This is all very, very useful stuff. So, for example, just to put some stuff on the board here, b4, bishop c3, believe it or not, it cuts the king. It's not just about materialism. And here, bishop a6. So both bishops are trying to cut escape squares here. And we get amazing, beautiful lines like this, where actually what happens, the magic here, is that queen g4 all of a sudden is very effective because the bishop is stopping the king go running to d2 or e1 so that the king's being put back in the box for rook h1 to be absolutely mating. So some very delicious variations result from a5 here. Uh, let's try and be more sensible though. Instead of b4 for a moment, uh, let's, let's say d6. Again, very beautiful stuff. Bishop a6 uh, and say b3. That punctures uh, that diagonal a bit. e3 is mega dangerous here, uh, opening up this diagonal. So, for example, f takes, queen takes, queen h2, sorry, queen h1, rook h2, queen d5. And that's just hopeless, absolutely crunching. But let's have a look at this again after d6, bishop a6. Here, if queen takes e3, bishop b7, so that diagonal, fresh then queen g2, checkmate. And for example, like this, this is absolutely crunching. Uh, tactically, it's uh, the bishop is covering the c3 escape square here, and the king's caught in the middle. It's really crushing stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Really beautiful variations result, it seems, from a5, where both bishops play a role in cutting the king escape squares here. Rather remarkable. But uh, bishop f6 is also very, very dangerous as played. It basically pins it pins this pawn, so that's that gives rise to resources like rook h4 sometimes as well. Uh, we have knight e5. Okay, threatening knight f7, uh, big threat. If white doesn't 
do something like that say here Queen takes h2 rook h4 using that pinned pawn there if g takes Queen takes Queen and so the bishop supporting this lovely rook h4 and here check check Bishop g5 check the King's got no escape it seems and this crumbles white after rook h6 uh, yeah e 3 is dropping that's a huge advantage for black so knight e5 was tried Bishop takes Queen takes check f6 with tempo Queen f4 rook g4 Queen c7 rook g8 protecting the bishop rook e1 uh, you might think oh hold on has, has white got anything else apart from rook e1 if queen f4 again this lovely resource can you guess cutting the king from f1 okay five seconds a5 yeah get used to this amazing resource a5 if you're going to play this fashion off like this <laughs> uh, if b4 a takes rook takes bishop a6 persistent to try and get the bishop on the diagonal and once that's there queen h2 is massive white would have to give up the queen that's it that's over uh, so here on a5 um, yeah that's that's really good uh, there's also believe it or not here there's <laughs> just to show the amazing resourcefulness of chess there's rook h4 believe it or not using the pin pawn and if queen d6 looking at f6 there's a totally stunning out of this world resource here in this position totally stunning which yeah can you guess 5,000 points if you can guess guess this one <laughs> and put a comment there if you did find this one black to play yeah only computers can find this black to play yeah do put a comment if you did honestly find this you might want to pause the video black to play here double exclam stunning visually okay bishop e6 even though the bishops <laughs> yeah it, it just does the job of interfering with f6 giving white no time uh, if queen takes e6 rook takes g3 check yes <laughs> the follow-up is unbelievable uh so here uh hg yeah we can work this one quite simply there's queen h1 but the other side of this coin f takes queen takes is that bad the other side of this coin taking with the f-pawn check no because actually the checks uh, really uh, lead to the king being checkmated so yeah bishop e6 absolutely stunning if d takes e3 and actually yeah white's delayed on any attack on f6 black's getting a free punch basically for f2 and then this crashes through yeah with more pyrotechnic moves like rook c8 you'd have to be a computer basically to do this this cuts escape squares uh, of the king and means now queen e4 is super powerful it also supports c2 coordination on c2 so for example rook bc1 check check and the king's getting mated there's no the king's in a box there no, no escape so wonderful absolutely wonderful resources exist in this position on Queen f4 the simplest yes is a5 uh, Queen h2 is the one to avoid so yeah you've got to be thinking about your king escape squares here if you're too keen, keen when you see a check as Fisher says perhaps the Caesar set plays a check actually this is not so hot because uh, here yeah there's there's life in white's position and f6 is a whole different story completely to these uh, ideas to totally with a5 you want to keep the king restricted by that queen value that piece that's restricting the escape squares try and bring another one to bear on f1 before the queen's committed and and renewing queen h2 with a vengeance basically so key idea key idea in my view there not to play that check even though it's lucrative there's other things to do you've got to cover the escapes first so basically uh, rook e1 was played we have now in this position queen takes h2 queen h1 queen f3 and f2 drops king d1 if king c3 then rook takes g3 check queen takes c2 huge winning 
So King D1. And here, can you see what Magnus played in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, a really nice liberating move. What would you play here? Okay, F4, liberating this bishop for bishop G4. Queen C3 uh, was played. So if queen takes f4, then this is absolutely crushing bishop g4 because the king's responsible for the rook here. If the king moves, queen takes e1. So that's hopeless. So uh, queen c3 was tried. We have f takes g3. White's in huge pain here. Bishop takes e4. Bishop g4 check. King c1. And now, can you see the final move Magnus plays? Okay, rook c8. The game ended here, pinning that queen. Huge position there for black. So if the game continues, as an example, so white resigned. If bishop d3 take the queen, rook h2 threatens nasties. So say check, check here. Checks run out for white. That's just desperate. This pawn's too slow because check there. And this is... This is over. White's going to just get mated. Or here, after if if the if um, King B two, there's no hope for this pawn basically, <laughs> as you might expect. Yeah, the Queen's on it anyway. Yeah, it's it's over. Okay, I'll take you to the game and position. I think there's a lot to study here. From a theoretical point of view, it seems as though the rook left, super attractive as it is. There might be a better theoretical continuation with Queen B4 early on. But the root lift really it created for me wonderful possibilities of these bishops taking away key escape squares with wonderful resources like A5. I really found the game a delight. You know, the young Magnus Carlsen using this fighting opening. And the next year in Chorus B, he, he came top the next year to qualify for Chorus A. So this was a great test for the Sicilian Svechnikov, which he later used the very next year. So it really was uh, a love of his, this Sicilian Svechnikov, Svechnikov in his early years, so 15 to 16, uh, getting through the, the ranks at Chorus. So uh, I hope you really enjoyed this game as much as me. Uh, there's a free lesson here, interactive training uh, lesson, uh, Fight Like Magnus, uh, by Chess Explained, who does a wonderful job, really conscientious um, analysis, tons of trainable uh, variations in the main course. But check out the uh, f the free lesson there, Kings Crusher TV slash Magnus. Uh, really worth getting into the Sicilian Svechnikov. I always believed in it. <laughs> <laughs> and and Magnus obviously subsequently started using it again in the World Championship matches. So, and I've had all sorts of messages, even from IMs on Facebook, about uh, my past Sicilian defence games, like in the Hearts League, which you might also want to check out as well. Uh, yeah, it's on. It's uh, there's a great interest in this opening at the moment. It's very very trendy, and very very exciting chess. I hope you'll agree. Okay, thanks very much.